Okay, so uh, this is Dr. Muhammad Asif, and uh, our today's session title is the Digital Transformation of Higher Education. Uh, our guest speaker for today's uh, talk is Professor uh, Gary Albertolin. Dr. Gary is the Senior Vice President for Purdue Online and Learning Innovation. He is a distinguished professor of computer graphics, technology, computer, and information technologies at Purdue University. He earned his BS at Northern Michigan University, a master's from Miami University, PhD at the Ohio State University, and was on the faculty in the College of Engineering at Ohio State University for three years before coming to Purdue University back in 1990s. From 95 through 2001, Professor Gary served as Department Head of Computer Graphics Technology at Purdue University from 2002 to 6 in his role as Associate Vice President and Director. He led the creation of Rosen Center for Advanced Computing and the Invision Center for Perceptualization. After five years as the Associate Dean of Graduate Programs in the College of Technology, he served as Dean from 2011 to 21 and spreaded the college transformation to the Purdue Polytechnic Institute. He has authored numerous papers in journals and trade publications on engineering and computer graphics, computer aided design, and visualization research. He has authored and co-authored seven textbooks in the area of computer aided design and engineering design graphics with one fundamentals of graphics communication currently uh, in its sixth edition. Professor Gary's research interests are in scientific visualization, interactive, uh, immersive environment, distributed and grid computing, workforce education, and STEM education. So uh, let's welcome uh, Professor Gary to uh, start his talk. Uh, Thank you very much for the introduction and good day, everyone. I'm uh, really excited to be able to give this presentation. There's a lot of, of of uh, really interesting things going on at Purdue that I think uh, you will find of interest. I'm gonna share that near the end of the presentation, but I wanna set the presentation up a little bit because I think we're all kind of living in a fog uh, somewhat because we don't actually um, realize the significance of the human transformation that's going on at this point that's being driven by the digital transformation that's occurring because of technology. So I'm going to describe a little bit about what that is, um, how that is challenging education in general, and you know some possible solutions through what we're doing here at Purdue University. So let me get started by saying that, first of all, the US higher education system roots is really, it was developed in the late 19th and early uh, 20th centuries to really train farmers and shopkeepers to become factory workers and office managers. And of course, there's a lot of universities around the, the world that have adopted or at least tried to uh, have their education, their higher education system um, look somewhat like what the U.S. has done. Uh, we obviously have a very strong higher education system, but it's been challenge, which I'll talk about here. Some of the things and the attributes that have uh, carried on from that 19th and early 20th century development is a very prescriptive, disciplinary, and specialized training that worked well for most of the 20th century. But the change from an industrialization to the digital age has not reflected what is actually going on in our society in general and higher education is behind. And so we really need to transform our entire um, education system for this digital age. And so if you look at the features of, you know, in parentheses, the idea of a modern American university, it's really uh, developed through Harvard's influence and Charles Elliott, the president of the time and about 10 different universities in the United States. But if you look at this list of the features, you're gonna see that most of those features are still um, ongoing. Um, that doesn't mean that they're all bad, but it might uh, raise questions about, shouldn't we be talking about whether the, what the next phase of higher education might be? And although those accomplishments are remarkable, as a way of educating in the 21st century, this really is a problem, which I'll talk about. 
The other thing that's going on, you're seeing this in a lot of modern societies right now is they're being challenged in many different ways. I urge, urge you all to look up uh, something and read a little bit more about what's referred to as Engel's pause. Uh, this is something that was described in the early period of the Industrial Revolution when we had these great technological challenges and the livelihoods of large number of people worsened before they begin to prosper again. And this happened during the Industrial Revolution um, where it was an all-encompassing societal transformation. I claim and others do that the digital transformation is repeating this only in the 21st century. And uh, the changes caused by industrialization meant that the principles of, the, of society had to also be redesigned and of course, higher education underpins modern society. So many are starting to claim, and I do, that we have to redesign higher education. The world has really fundamentally changed. The fourth industrial revolution, which is occurring now, includes general purpose technologies such as artificial intelligence, big data, the internet of things, everything's connected, automation and cloud computing. That is all things digital. It's driving every part of our uh, economy and our society. And education has really not adopted the mindset that we need to also transform higher education around these general purpose technologies. So if you look at the fourth industrial revolution and why it's different during the first three industrial revolutions, all that was needed to be smarter than the machines, that's all we needed to do. We just need to be smarter than the machines to, because machines were doing manual tasks and cognitive tasks were the exclusive domain of humans. That is now being challenged. That equilibrium is now being challenged. The idea that you can outsmart your smartphone is impossible, okay? To give you a quick example. The remaining human advantages over the machines are cognitive tasks that require creativity and intuition. Those are things that the machines can't do yet that solve problems, especially open-ended problems that require uh, great leaps of imagination. There still remains demand for skills to program, test, and oversee machines. Social skills also that require emotional intelligence rather than cognitive alone are also important. And preparing graduates slow, solely for cognitive skills will not be enough to survive this fourth industrial revolution. As, and as you know, most disciplines focus on cognitive skill development, and that simply will not be enough for the future. We are truly in a game changer. It's nothing less than the transformation of humankind. And its scale, scope, and complexity is unlike anything humanity has ever experienced. And so it's even hard to predict what the future is going to be like. And some of these fundamental shifts in society that we're seeing is in developed nations, a person born today on average can expect to live for 100 years. Their careers will be much longer because they will be healthier. And one of the, our college's taglines here is how do you prepare graduates for jobs that do not exist? You have to get into that mindset. And the second uh, is the shift in skill requirement, as I said before, where cognitive, technical, and social, those are now going to be reversed, where social, technical will be dominant over the cognitive um, over the next uh, century and in the future. You're already seeing the shift. The slide actually is a little bit uh, old, but you'll see the shift is going from what I would call the cognitive things um, such as actually the actual things like the STEM discipline itself went from number one to number six on this list. But uh, some of those more human skills, flexibility, time management, ability to collaborate, effective communications, those are the top four job skills that they're looking for in modern business and industry. And so you're seeing that flip occurring already. 
And I challenge all of you to think about, is that the way you're uh, teaching right now? Have you made that flip yet? It's not easy, but it's something we need to start doing. And then we need to talk about the new literacies. The new literacies include data literacy, technological literacy, and human literacy. These all should be delivered through AI-assisted personalized learning, which I call the holy grail of learning. We're not there, we're not even close, but it's, it's the path that we need to be on. We need to be uh, uh, start looking at competency-based education to replace the credit hour. Um, and faculty need to start thinking about themselves as learning coaches. They manage the learning process. Um, and that's a different way of thinking. Some of the other higher order metal, uh, mental skills that are needed is a mindset and ways of thinking about the world. We need to get students and graduates to start being systems thinkers. They need to uh, view their discipline within the entire industry um, and think holistically and make connections in an integrative way. Uh, they need to be much more entrepreneurial and creative, okay, which applies the creative mind to the economic and social sphere. They need to have cultural agility because we're working in a global environment and they be, need, to, need to be much more critical thinkers. Uh, the habit of discipline, rational analysis and judgment. And so those are the upper uh, higher order uh, mental skills that we also need to be prepared for. So if you look at this, the new literacies and you combine it with the cognitive capacities that are mentioned here, that truly is a transformation of, of the learning experience. And then how do you actually teach this? The best way of doing it is through what we refer to as thematic study across disciplines, removing the constraints of the three credit hour silos. Project-based learning that are hands-on, give students an opportunity to synthesize their knowledge across fields of study, and then having real world connections, working with industry, societal institutions and so forth on real world kinds of projects through senior design projects, other types of projects and an emphasis on internships. I also urge you to take a look at the American Association of Colleges and Universities. They've come up, they've looked at the uh, research literature in the science of learning and they have uh, come up with what they refer to as the high impact educational practices. These are the most effective ways of teaching uh, that have been uh, verified through years and years of research. And I'm not gonna read them, but you can see some of the things that are listed there. Again, think about uh, how much of these activities you have in your curriculum right now and what you could do to start adding those. So what are some of the Purdue initiatives that transform learning for the digital age? So let me quickly go through some of what we're uh, doing itself. We created something called the, the Purdue Polytechnic Institute. What we did is we took an existing college, a college of technology, and we totally transformed it over about a five year period of time. We took those high impact uh, educational practices, we integrated them and used them in the context of our discipline, which are STEM disciplines and uh, basically applied computer science and applied engineering. And you can see that list there, some of the things that we focused on. One of the ones uh, that uh, you need to look at is right in the middle of the list, we actually integrated humanities studies into the curriculum itself. So there's a true integration and students learn liberal arts in context and, and STEM with the support of the liberal arts um, that you have. And it's a very uh, creative kind of thing that we did, but you can see some examples of what we've done. During that transformation, the college doubled in size. We've been overrun with students and interest. Uh, salaries have gone up dramatically, starting salaries of the students. Um, and it's, uh, it was at that time, the fastest growing college at Purdue University for a five year period of time. So if you do these things, you will 
find great success because students and in industry get that there's a different way of doing things. And it's a very, very attractive uh, way of uh, teaching and learning. We also created polytechnic high schools. We went about uh, the idea of reinventing high school because high schools also, so K through 12, we're working on changing that. Teachers are mentors and coaches and students are responsible for their own learning. And we've integrated learning with the humanities, science, and math. Design thinking and innovation are foundations. Uh, there are no formal classes in these high schools. Everything is team-based, industry-sponsored, learn by doing. Uh, students that do well get automatic admission into Purdue, which is a big deal because it's very hard to get into Purdue University. And, it, and it's a model school that's being replicated across communities uh, in the state of Indiana. We have created uh, Purdue Global and Purdue Online. Our goal is to uh, uh, create the best in class online education, uh, both nationally and internationally. And it's through accessibility, affordability for pursuit of degrees, both undergraduate and graduate certificates, upskilling and reskilling, working both with individuals as well as companies. So there's a huge effort around Purdue Global and uh, Purdue Online or online education in general. We've also uh, have something going on at Purdue here in West Lafayette, the residential campus we call Transformative Education 2.0. And it's the goal is to make Purdue University the most innovative residential and online learning program in the U.S. among large research universities. We're going to do it through uh, what you see listed there. In many cases, it's what I've already talked about, experiential learning and, and so forth. But we're, we're doing that across the entire uh, university right now with the Polytechnic that was developed a few years ago, uh, serving as one of the models. And then we've created a virtual college, what we call the Innovation College. And that's the challenge and support students, faculty, and staff to engage in innovative learning programs, courses, and uh, classroom pedagogy with the goal to improve student learning and increase the number of innovative new courses and transdisciplinary programs. Uh, we want to lower institutional barriers that prevent faculty from uh, developing and implementing innovations in teaching and learning. And we want to actively promote the, the dissemination, scaling, and adoption of the most innovative teaching and learning models at Purdue University. And that initiative started about a year ago. Um, we're also looking at uh, creating what we call the classroom of the future. These are exper experimental learning spaces. It's, it's gonna showcase the classroom of the future. It'll uh, have a uh, high use of artificial intelligence and. Uh, augmented reality and virtual reality and all of these uh, uh, digital transformation technologies I referred to in, uh, earlier. And it would support projects related to innovative teaching and learning projects. We would do it in such a way that it would then become replicable. And we want this to remove barriers so that we can successfully scale these technologies into the classroom to improve teaching and learning. Um, and then some of the things that we're focusing in on around the digital transformation includes student assessment through the use of artificial intelligence, personalized learning through uh, use of artificial intelligence, and then faculty productivity to assist faculty in being better teachers um, through also artificial intelligence. Um, and then just, uh, really, the last slide, I want to summarize this by saying that the real challenge is that leaders in higher education tend to uh, be much more conservative. They're risk averse and often have few new ideas because they're, they're busy managing the day to day operations and they don't carve out enough time to be innovative and creative. Um, in many cases, they don't have the skill set um, to implement any new ideas. And they don't have the emotional stamina necessary to withstand change within higher ed, which is very, very difficult. We have learned how to do some of those things. We uh, have our, our um, 
uh, leaders go through um, training so that they can uh, become change managers. And so it always starts with people. And I want to summarize that, you know, all these things I've talked about, about. You have to start with the people. You have to work with the faculty. We did a lot of faculty development, a lot of leadership development to help us get to the point that we are right now. And so if you really want to get started on this, I'd suggest you take a look at some of these uh, readings that I've listed here and also uh, just go to the Purdue website and uh, look up some of these initiatives that I've already talked about, and you can get a much uh, deeper understanding of what it is that we're uh, doing and trying to do. So that, in summary, is, uh, you know, what I have to present. Um, I don't know if there's uh, time for a question or two in the chat box, but um, I want to thank you all for attending, and uh, that's my presentation for the, for today. Thank you.